For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with the soldier that kept him. So, Saul of Tarsus, is it? Yes, sir. You know, it wasn't that long ago that Claudius commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. How is it that a Jew is able to have a hired house and a private Roman guard? Well, my Hebrew name is Saul, but my Roman name is Paul. And I'm a Roman, Roman citizen by birth. And as a Roman citizen, I have certain rights. And I've had to appeal my case before Caesar. And so that's why we're here. Well, Paul, I'm tasked with protecting you and making sure you don't escape. I'm also uh, ordered to allow you as many visitors as you would like. Stop. Come around. He's okay, Vetus. This is Tick because he's a good friend of mine. Uh, we've worked a lot. He's going to help me write a couple of epistles. And Luke over here is going to be writing the gospel. Uh, he's also writing about our journey uh, uh, leading up to this time. Okay, you may enter. Check a kiss, old friend. Call to see you. Good to see you in Rome. Wish it was under better circumstances, though. No. See there if you like, Vetus. Thank you. Take your case. You know, I'll be working an assignment for you after breakfast, if you don't mind. Uh, I'd like you to go over to the synagogue and see if the chief leaders of the synagogue will come and meet with me. I can do that. Okay. No wasting any time, are you, Paul? Well, we must redeem the time, take your case, for the days are evil. What are those? These, these are six epistles uh, that I wrote that God revealed them to me. Uh, and he said he would reveal more of them. Hmm. To the Galatians, to, to Thessalonica, to, to the Corinthians, they need more like three. Ah, one of the Romans. I'd like to read this one. Oh, be my guest. Thanks.
Krishna. Okay, you can answer. Brother, this is Saul of Tarsus, also known as Paul. Shalom, me. Good to see you. Please. This wife who sent for us, Paul. Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against my nation or the customs of our people, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they examined me, found no fault in me and would have let me go until the Jews spoke out against it. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. For this cause have I called for you to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. We neither received letters from Judea, neither did any of the brethren that came show or spake any harm of thee. But we desire to hear what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, everywhere it is spoken against. And Paul expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. No! I won't have no part of it. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the prophet Isaiah unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and believe in their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you, that the salvation of God shall be sent unto the Gentiles, and they shall hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed, and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God, and teaching those things which concerned the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. This was now the third time in Paul's ministry that he announced he was going to the Gentiles, after going to the Jews first, and his message was rejected by them. The first time was in Antioch of Pisidia, and the second time was in the city of Corinth. The first six epistles that Paul wrote, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and 1st and 2nd Thessalonians were written during the latter half of the book of Acts on Paul's second and third missionary journeys. Stop. Who are you? My name is Onesimus. I was a servant to my master, Philemon. A good friend, Paul, a co-worker. He's okay, Vegas. Are you a runaway slave? No, no, not as you Romans use slavery. I contracted with Philemon, bonded with him. He agreed to pay off my debts, and I would work for him. And you have fled from him, no doubt. Are you aware of the penalty under Roman law for runaway slaves? Yes, and I wish to return and pay off my debt. But when I heard Paul was here, I was hoping I could minister to him before my ship set sail for Colossus. He's okay, Vegas. He can stay with uh, Ticket Cuts and with Luke and our other place over there. He'll be a good servant unto us. He can go get firewood and water and and minister to our needs. Uh, (laughs) You Jews will trust anyone, even a runaway slave. It's okay. Please, please, have some water. Vegas, I believe in Jesus Christ now. And God doesn't see us as someone who's a Jew, Greek, bond, or free, but he sees us as someone who's either in Christ or in Adam. 
What does that even mean? Wait, are you one of those Christians? With me? The follower of that miracle worker from Galilee? Yes. Can you do miracles like your Jesus did, Paul? Well, I actually did recently when I was on the island of Melitum before I came here. Uh, I was bitten by a, a, a venomous beast as I was taking some fire and, and moving it about, and it lashed onto my hand. And when the, the people of the island saw what had happened, they thought that I would soon fall dead. But after a while, when they saw no harm had come to me, then they thought I must have been a god. Uh, well, after that, a few days later, the chief man of the island's father, Publius, uh, was sick of the bloody flocks and had a fever. And I was able to lay hands on him and pray for him, and God healed him. But now, today, uh, God has taken away those miraculous sign gifts when that which is perfect has come. I hope you know I can check out your story, and I will. You know, it's too bad that Jesus couldn't deliver himself from a Roman cross. I heard he died on one about 30 years ago. He did die on the cross, Vetus. But not because of his wounds. He himself said, I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man take it from me. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to raise it again. Jesus did die for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried. And after three days, he arose again according to the scriptures. And he was seen of the twelve apostles and of above five hundred men at one time. And last of all, he was seen as me, as one who was born out of due time. So you're saying you saw the miracle worker alive after he died? I did see him alive, but not the same way that the twelve apostles seen him. On the earth, I saw him in a heavenly vision, as he appeared to me on the road to Damascus, and where he called me by his grace. Would you like to hear that? Sure, please. Why not? We might be here for a while. But don't think you're going to convert a Roman soldier here today. Venus, I can't convert anyone. Only the Word of God can save a lost soul. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Faith, my good friend, cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The gospel, which was preached by me, I didn't receive it from man, neither was I taught it by any man, but I received it by revelation from God. Hear your story then. Slave, your apostle is going to tell us how he talked to a dead man. Now after that, my countrymen and myself had rejected the counsel of God, and they stoned Stephen, while I consented unto his death. I was breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. And I went into the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue that if I found any of this way, whether they were men or women, I might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as I journeyed, I came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shined round about me. And I fell to the earth, and I heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And trembling and astonished, I said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto me, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. What happened next? And the men which journeyed with me stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And I arose from the earth, and when my eyes were open, I saw no man, but they led me by the hand, and brought me into Damascus. And I was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple of Damascus, a man named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed, and have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him, that he might receive 
his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on this name. And the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on me said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared in the, in the way as thou camest, hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from my eyes that had, that had been scales, and I received sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. Then I was certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus, and straightway I Preach Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. But all that heard me were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them, which called on his name in Jerusalem, and came hither for that intent, that he might bring them out unto the chief priests? But I increased the more in strength, and confounded the Jews which dwelt in Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. With the stoning of Stephen, blindness in part happened unto Israel, and God has set them aside for the time being to usher in the present dispensation of grace. Venus. Huh. Very interesting, Paul, but I, I think your only convert today will be a runaway slave. You'll not win a Roman soldier with that foolishness. We do preach Christ crucified, Venus, unto the Jews, it is a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. We invite your questions, Vetus. But now I must deal with our friend here. Well, can you please do it over there, Paul? I need to get some sleep. Sure. Let's move your chains over there next to your runaway. Thank you. God forgave you after everything you've done in opposition to him. He would forgive someone like me, wouldn't he? Sure, Onesimus. Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins and that he was buried? Then after three days, he rose from the dead. I do. Then God saved you at that very moment that you believed, and he placed you into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. And you became my brother, Onesimus, and Philemon's as well. I won't start speaking in tongues like they did at Pentecost, will I? No, that was in times past under Israel's program when God had promised through John and through Jesus that Israel would be baptized with the Holy Ghost and they would be endued with power from on high so that they could be bold witnesses. And they began to preach the gospel of the kingdom to the nation of Israel at that time. But today in the body of Christ, we're baptized by the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Ghost, what is the difference? Well, in times past, Israel was promised that they would be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And when they were, they would be endued with power from on high. And on that day of Pentecost, when Jews from all over the world were assembled there, uh, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit and the gospel of the kingdom was being preached so that people from all, Jews from all over the world could hear uh, the gospel in their language. So is that when the church began? No, Onesimus, nothing began on that day. Uh, as a matter of fact, back when Jesus and his disciples were preaching the gospel of the kingdom that we just talked about, they were preaching it unto none but unto the Jew only. And those Jews that believed the gospel of the kingdom, uh, they made up what was called the little flock. And it was to that remnant that the kingdom uh, was to be given. He even said that it's the Father's good pleasure to give unto you, that's the believing remnant there in Israel, the kingdom. On the day of Pentecost, 
that kingdom church was added to. 3,000 souls were added unto that kingdom church on that day. It was nothing new. It was a fulfillment of something that had been prophesied way back uh, by the prophet Joel. Uh, back in the time right before Stephen was stoned, Peter and James came to the temple and they were preaching. But on their way into the temple, they saw a lame man who had been lame from his mother's womb and they healed him as a sign to the nation of Israel. But the leadership rejected them. They rejected their king and the offer of the kingdom that was made right there as Peter preached unto the people. And it was after that that God saved me by his grace and I became the apostle of the Gentiles. That was almost one year after Jesus had presented the parable unto the leaders in Israel uh, about Israel being cut off as a nation for rejecting the word of God as prophesied by the prophet Hosea. What parable? Luke, can you hand me that uh, good news that you'd been writing? Sure, Paul. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, here it is. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. What does that mean? Well, Israel in this story is the fig tree. And Jesus came to the nation of Israel for three years seeking fruit or seeking righteousness, and he didn't find any. And so his father wanted the tree to be cut down but he said give him another year and if we fertilize it with the word of god and that's exactly what happened the apostles went and preached for another year and preached the kingdom and at the end of that year israel didn't receive it and so the nation was to be cut off at that time so we in the body of christ aren't part of israel's program we have our own program? Is that what you're saying? You're right, Onesimus. The body of Christ was a mystery that had been hidden God from before the foundation of the world until it was revealed unto me as the apostle of the Gentiles. Why would he keep it a mystery? Well, God kept it a mystery for a reason, because he has an adversary, the devil. And had the princes of this world known, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. You can read all about this tomorrow uh, in, in my epistle to the Corinthians if you'd like. I would greatly like to read that. But is the crucifixion really that important? Well, Onesimus, if Jesus wouldn't have died and been buried and on the third day rose from the dead, then you couldn't have been saved or we couldn't have been saved and placed into the body of Christ. Where today there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, but the one new man, which doesn't have an earthly destiny like the nation of Israel does, but we have a heavenly destiny. A heavenly destiny and an earthly destiny? Uh, there are two different programs then? Correct. When Lucifer fell, he caused a third of the angels to rebel with him uh, up in the heavenly places. But later on, Satan caused mankind to sin in the garden and rebel against God. And God is going to use the nation of Israel to reclaim the dominion that they lost back in the garden. He's going to use the body of Christ to reclaim what was lost in the heavenly places. So there are two different people, Israel and the body of Christ, yep. in two different locations, heaven and earth. Thus two programs. Exactly. Now, let me explain something. When Israel first became a nation, as they came out of Egypt, they met with God and Moses at Mount Sinai. And God gave the nation of Israel, not the church, but he gave the nation of Israel his word. And he told the nation of Israel that if they would keep his covenant, then they would be a peculiar treasure unto him above all the nations of the earth. And not only that, that they would be a holy nation, but a nation of kings and priests. Now, that's going to all happen in their kingdom when Jesus, their king, comes back one day and establishes his kingdom. Now, uh, you guys need to get some rest because you guys have a long day tomorrow. So you should uh, go on back to your place. And uh, we'll see you in the morning for breakfast. So, yeah. Congratulations, my brother.
Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Apphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me, whom I have sent again. Thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be, as it were, of necessity, but willingly. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever, not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, specially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If thou therefore count me a partner, receive him as myself. If he hath wronged thee, or oweth thee aught, put that on mine account. I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it, albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me, even thy own self besides. Morning, Paul. Been up all night? No, because you all worry too much about me. I've been praying. I just arose a little while ago. I've been praying for the uh, churches that we've established all over. What's this? This wasn't here when I went to bed. But God's Spirit moved upon me while I was praying, Vetus, to write the epistle to Philemon, Onesimus' master, to ask him to receive him back as a brother. Wait, you want his master to forgive him of his debts? Why? Well, Vetus, we're all sinners, all of them sin to come short of the glory of God. Even Paul has sinned. Yeah, well, I've never run away from my responsibilities like this slave. Yes, but you've certainly uh, coveted other people's wives or lied or done things like that, haven't you? Is Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I'm chief. Howbeit, for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering, for a pattern to all who would believe hereafter. God's word says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Enough! I won't have a, these Christians or Jews or whatever you are rallying against me. I'm a soldier of Rome, and I have a duty to do. And that is to see that Paul here gets his right as a Roman citizen to go before Caesar. And I had to listen to all your tales. You're right. We're sorry, Vetus. It's just, we know the peace of God that passes all understanding. And we would like you to know that. Sorry. Who is it? It's Lucius, sir. Are you sure? Very sure. Thank you, soldier. That's all. Sorry, Paul. Where were we? Oh, yeah, you were wasting your time on me. No. What do you mean, Vetus? Well, this Jesus of yours, he may forgive a runaway slave, but you would never forgive someone like me. I've been. I've done terrible things. God saved Saul, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but he was obtained mercy because he did it ignorantly in unbelief. None of the Roman gods would do that for you. Venus, Jesus took all of your sins upon him at the cross. He paid your debt for you. 
God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and he hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. For God hath made Christ to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I just read that in your letter to the Corinthians. Well, these words have moved me, Paul. If Jesus will have someone like me, then I'll have him as my Savior. Jesus will have all who will come to him by faith. Yeah, I heard what you told in this mess last night, that uh, how Jesus died. And I believe it, that he rose again. Amen. Then welcome to the family, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for caring enough to tell me to tell me the truth. I don't deserve it, especially uh, after I, how I treated you all. Especially you, Slicker. Onesimus. That's all right. None of us deserve this forgiveness. None of us do. So, Vitas, who was that at the door? Well, I had Paul's story about uh, his uh, miracles over in Mylena, and I had, a, I had one of my soldiers check it out for me uh, when they were over there. He came to confirm it tonight. That, uh, that didn't even convince me enough. It was the words that were spoken tonight that Amen. convinced me and really spoke truth. Good morning, Paul. Shh, let's let Venus sleep here, please. Check this. The Holy Spirit moved upon me as I was praying. He wants me to write an epistle to the people of Ephesus. It's still dark out. My eyes are not what they used to be. I still remember the time when I was with the Galatians, and they'd even plucked out their eyes and given them to me if it was possible. Okay, let me get my uh, pen. Whenever you're ready, Paul. Paul. Why do you always do that? Do what? You start every letter with just your name. How else will I know who's writing? <laughs> Good point. All right. Uh, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You always put grace and peace at the beginning of every one of your epistles. Why is that? Well, grace and peace don't come from me. They come from God. Today, we live in the dispensation of the age of grace, where God is bestowing his grace upon us. And peace is the condition that we find ourselves in today, because God is not at enmity with us today. Therefore, grace and peace. And why do you say that we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places? Because Israel was promised physical blessings here on earth, in their earthly kingdom. But we're promised spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Okay. Go ahead with uh, your epistle. I don't want to have you forget anything. Oh, that's okay, Jerry, because God, the Holy Spirit's not going to allow me to forget any of this. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation, he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before a few words, whereby, when you read, you may understand my knowledge of the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same mind and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God 
given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do, particularly that beloved brother, the faithful minister of the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Well, I think that's enough, don't you? Amen. Timothy, my good friend. It's good to see you again. I hope you've had a prosperous journey. It was very prosperous. Well, Paul, can I talk with you for a minute alone? Absolutely, Timothy. I always have time for you. You're like a son to me. And you're like a father to me. Paul, I want to thank you for letting me travel with you ever since your second missionary journey. We've endured much together, and you've treated me just like any of the elder brethren, and I thank you for that as well. Timothy, my son, you've shown the wisdom that goes beyond your years, and a willingness to do anything for the cause of Christ. Well, I remember that time when you got circumcised, just so that we could reach the people in your region with the gospel. They wouldn't have listened to me if I didn't. They knew my father was a Greek. Paul, I'd also like to thank you for trusting me when you sent me to establish the saints in Corinth and Thessalonica. I need to thank you, but I want to also tell you that God has another assignment for you, very important. What is it, Paul? I need you to go to the city of Philippi and take a letter that I just finished writing and establish the saints there in the faith of Christ. Of course. Anything from my God has saved me by His grace. And that's not all. I also want you to go after you've left there to the city of Ephesus. I want you to shepherd the flock there. I'll send Epaphroditus to you. Uh, once he's recovered from his illness. You used to just be able to lay hands on the people and they would be healed. What happened? Those days are gone because the Word of God has been completed. In the past, we had temporary sign gifts when the church was in its infancy. But as the Word of God is being completed, those sign gifts were being done away. God was taking away those childish gifts, just like a good parent would do when a child grows up and taking their toys away from them. I remember you writing that not too long ago to the Corinthians, but can I leave a little later? I'd like to be here, by your side, when you appear before Caesar. No, Timothy, I wish you could, but we need to do what's the most important for the body of Christ right now. Of course, Paul. I'll be ready to leave by morning. Okay, and no sad goodbyes when we depart in the morning. God be with you, and with you as well. I need you after breakfast to take the epistle to uh, Ephesus and deliver it to the people there. Let them know of my state and how I'm doing. Comfort them. And when uh, Timothy is done with his work over in Philippi, he'll come and relieve you. Of course, Paul. Hey, Paul. Yes. When I read your letters, yes. the words there are powerful. Thank you. But in person, your uh, what? Your bodily presence is, well, forgive me, weak. <laughs> That's okay, Vetus. The Corinthians had something very similar. They said his bodily presence is, or his his words are mighty, 
powerful, weighty, but his bodily presence is weak and contemptible. <laughs> God bless you and peace be with you. Take care. Well, thank you, Paul. Meet us. Luke, peace be with you. Safe travels. Paul was then taken to see Nero with no one by his side but Vetus, his Roman guard. He is soon released and continues his ministry. Not much is known about the time in between Paul's two arrests and imprisonments in Rome, but it is during this last part of Paul's life that he writes 1 Timothy and Titus. Many believe he went to Spain and returned to some of the churches he had already established to strengthen them. We know that Paul was in Miletum just before arriving in Rome again where he was arrested for the second time because Paul tells Timothy they left Trophimus in Miletum sick. Paul, is that Luke's garbage? Uh, no, actually, this is a Tychicus garment that he left for us just in case uh, someone else might need it. Vetus, your circus, get back. Yeah, my captain uh, insisted that I guard Paul again since we have such a good history. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, Paul, well, I'll go get some firewood and then I'll go to the market and meet with Luke. You do that. Paul, a great me fear for your life. Fires are burning all over Rome, and the emperor is blaming the Christians and the Jews for it. He's confiscating the property to rebuild the city. I heard the men in my own regiment, they think Nero had the city burnt so he can build it his own way. Vetus, we may not have much time then. Uh, Aristarchus just left. Uh, can you go to the, the market and see if you can get him and Luke? I need to... Uh, get a pistol written to Timothy. All right, we'll be back. Yes, Paul? Aristarchus, I need you to have a seat. I need you to write an epistle for me to Timothy. Vetus, I need you to make sure if something happens to me that this epistle gets to Timothy. It must get to Timothy. We will, Paul, we will. But shouldn't we be making other plans? No, Vetus. This is more important for the body of Christ right now. Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, according to the power of God, who hath saved us, and called us, with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but now is made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and have brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, and an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. 
for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left to Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou aware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it might not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Nero. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul, they're coming for you right now. I can still get you out of here. No, Vetus. My life is coming to an end, but yours has just begun. Vetus, bring out your prisoner. I have orders from Caesar himself that Paul is to be executed immediately. It's okay, Vetus. I want you to be with me in the end. You are hereby sentenced to death by order of Emperor Nero for inciting rebellion in the empire with your teachings. This sentence is to be carried out immediately. Do you have any last words? Yes. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Never be in chains again, my friend. Now you are truly free. What will you do now, Vetus? I don't know. Let me help. Good. The Lord can always use another ambassador. For almost 2,000 years now, since Saul of Tarsus, God's chief enemy, was saved on the road to Damascus. The dispensation of grace that was given to Paul has continued on. It will continue to be preached until this dispensation ends at the rapture of the body of Christ, just before the time of Jacob's trouble, which Christians know as the tribulation period.
Those who trust Jesus Christ alone for their salvation prior to the tribulation period will not have to go through that terrible time of tribulation because God has not appointed believers today to face his wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him.